Well, hello there, citizens of the Reject Nation. We are here, and it is time for another solo movie reaction to Nicolas Cage and John Travolta in the 1997 sci-fi action epic Face Off. That's right, peeps. Somehow I have made it decades through this life, well into 2023 now without ever having seen Face Off. I could not be more excited. I feel like it's rare these days that you get to go into a movie with this particular blend of anticipation, but also just pure bewildered curiosity. I have heard so much about this movie over the years, and yet somehow I feel like I have absolutely no idea what to expect, even still, which is just a feeling I'm going to savor as we proceed here. Uh, but needless to say, I'm a huge Nick Cage fan from Moonstruck to Mandy, Raising Arizona, too many films to name. He has turned in some of my favorite performances over the years. Big love for John Travolta as well. These two are prolific, and I cannot wait to see what kind of weird sparks fly as they collide here in this film but hey guys before we hop in why don't you leave a like on the video that would be very much appreciated subscribe and hit that notification bell and if you want to get the full face off experience come on over to patreon.com slash the real rejects sync up with your own copy and see everything that doesn't make these reaction highlights thank you to prepper for editing these down and without further ado guys it's time to face off <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. Okay, so this will be like peak crossover woo. <laughs> well, I'm getting excited. <laughs> you don't get a lot of firsts like this, you know. It's like an alternate universe version of The Punisher about to happen right now. Thomas Jane one. <laughs> <laughs> God, already just wasting no time. <laughs> it's all in the eyes. That mustache, too. Where is this in relation to Raising Arizona? They're just having the best day. Oh, yeah. Woo hoo! Oh, <laughs> no. Innocence lost. Oh, no. Oh, my. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, poor guy. Punch me out, man. You got it. <laughs> Caster Troy. <laughs> okay. Finally put a a face to the name to the face off. I've heard yeah, because I've heard the name Caster Troy, but I never realized that was that was this. <laughs> Sinclair is hot. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fascinating amalgamation of tones and and feelings and all sorts of things. <laughs> Even here, the first three minutes. <laughs> what? I was about to say this was reminding me of like a James Bond meets Da Vinci Code thing with him, but now it's. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> the meme. <laughs> Where are we in relation to when Rush Hour was there? <laughs> Convention Center. A jet was just chartered. Anderson Airfield. Guess who paid the bill in cash? Pollux Troy. Put one of our people on that plane. Pollux. Caster and Pollux. The cast, like the constellation. Shouts out to all my Geminis and my Greek and Roman mythology majors. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
just all the crane shots and slow mos and walking and flapping and everything. <laughs> Is that all drugs and then chiclets? <laughs> That's good. If I didn't love you so damn much, I'd have to kill you, bro. I hate it when you call me bro. <sighs> Don't see Avatar the way I want her. You guys are paid to protect him from everybody, including himself. And stay away from downtown on the 18th. It's going to be a little, um, smoggy. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's good brotherly love. Would you like anything else once we're airborne? A peach. A peach? You know, I can, uh... <laughs> if I were to let you s my tongue, would you be grateful? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> I'm, I'm very disoriented, but this is quite fun. I'm having a very good time. Yes, look at that heat. As they bring the heat. Archer. FBI! Archer. Damn! The things you do for the batch. Come on! Are they gonna... <laughs> God damn it! Wow. <laughs> A little over... under cranking on that shot. Whoa! Oh no! Oh Jesus! Whew. Nice, uh, cool Dutch angle shot to pull into. No matter how dramatic, it's still freaking awesome. <laughs> God damn it, Sean! All right, let's do this. <laughs> Combo helicopter plane chase. I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> Boss. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> There's an engine out. We've got to stop. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, no. <laughs> Woo, yeah. Hear them rockets whistle? <laughs> Hell of a plane crash. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Class classic. The man with the golden guns. Uh-oh. Uh, something tells me Lil Bro's not gonna make it out of this, yeah. Woo! Oh! <laughs> the ear! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Oh, damn. Oh! <laughs> nice wire gag. Guys! Whoa. That was some ADR. I mean, that was pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Got both these dudes just double fisting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's do this. Who's getting sucked into the blades? I'm about to unleash the biblical plague Hele deserves. Hele. Say, how is your daughter anyway? Is she right for you by now? Oh. Your darling Janie? Your little peach? Oh, boy. Oh, no. Don't use anyone's family members and peach in the same sentence ever again. I think you better pull the trigger. Because I don't give a... <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I don't know what we as a, as a timeline does, did to deserve Nicolas Cage, but I'm happy it, it happened. Oh boy, here it goes. Oh, here it goes. Whoa! Whoa, Jesus! <laughs> ah! Okay, I thought he was gonna get, like, cheese gratered right through that thing. I was about to be, like, a, like Resident Evil the movie. <laughs> You're all going to die down here. 
like Elvis done left the building. Ha <laughs> ha. Nice. Graceland reference or leaving Las Vegas, you know, which was the Nicolas Cage Elvis movie? You yeah. know, Nicolas Cage, Elvis. You, yeah, you get the point. <laughs> you change the way you look every week. Who are you supposed <laughs> to be now? I'm supposed to be me. Not like you have a clue who I am anyway. No, it's good. Be yourself. I gotta meet. Hmm. <laughs> it's over. It's over. Is it? Put in for a desk job. Or I'll, I'll do counseling. Sit down and talk about Mike. I'll do it. Anything you want. Oh. I just want you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is such a lovely scene. I know. I know this isn't gonna last, but that was. I'm glad they they took a minute for that. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> oh, hey, you knew it was coming, Pete. <laughs> the fallout will be a tad worse than Gulf War syndrome. Ooh. I'm interested in bomb. Another word until I see my brother. Sure. <laughs> Ugh. Green screen this. There is one other possibility. Oh, my. I was going to say, I almost forgot the, the main premise of this movie. <laughs> Just pulled in by all this other <laughs> ridiculous chaos. Oh, God. You're keeping him alive. Okay. What if you could walk into Air One Prison and give Pollux a nice big brotherly hug as Castor Troy? Dr. Walsh can alter the likeness, even the voice of a government witness. <laughs> what we're suggesting for you, Archer, isn't a permanent transplant like that. Just a temporary trade. What? Temporary trade? Is that based on any kind of real technology? It looked sort of semi-plausible. Then we simply connect the muscles, tear ducts, and nerve endings. So you want to take his face and mine? Borrow. <laughs> the procedure's completely reversible. Sure. You have lived and breathed Castor Troy for years. I'll get his game <laughs> to talk. That's what I do. Well, if you can't, the bomb will blow, and Castor Troy will win. Oh, you said it. You said it, CCH Pounder. When was the last time you saw Castor Troy? Hey! I don't have to answer shit. You're right, but know this. You're a convicted felon on probation for harboring Castor Troy. One phone call from me and your son will end up in a foster home. Oh, boy. But you ain't got nothing on me, and you know it. Or I can talk to your sister again. She's right outside. Hey, Sean? Oh. How's your dead son? <sighs> Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, I wow. heard something about the 18th, but that's all I know. <laughs> Good trick with the empty chamber, Jesus. Whew. This is a black bag operation. You can't tell Lazaro, and you can't tell your wife. Excellent. After that beautiful, cathartic scene. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> of course, yes. Let's go. Let's get one more quick swig of <laughs> warm family life before we go back to chaos. Things are going to get better now that you're home. The scar won't move, but it will heal if you let it. Plus, you got all that chest carpet to, you know, cover it up. It's a righteous <laughs> chest of hair. And this thing won't fully end until I did one last thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Feels so bad for her. You're going back on assignment again. Just one last time. Why? <laughs> no, don't do the face thing now. I have a scar that, that if you can put this back after, it's, it's like a reminder. Sure. I mean, I guess they can do anything <laughs> at the skin lab. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh, nice! <laughs> nice way to do the gore gag without completely showing it to you as well.
God, like like twenty odd minutes ago, this wasn't even like a, a super sci fi movie, and now and now <laughs> it's weird. Like this, yeah, it doesn't feel like completely ungrounded, and yet it is like incredibly over the top. <laughs> Oh yeah. Get that get that re gloving on. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I still sound like me. Oh yeah, we gotta get you on Mission Impossible up. I've implanted a microchip on your larynx. It's fantastic, but you'll have to be careful. Pressure, sharp blow, even a violent sneeze could dislodge it. Oh, well... Peach. I can eat a peach for hours. Peach. I can eat a peach for hours. Whoa. You got two days to get Pollock to talk. Either way, Miller comes in and pulls you out. Make the most of it. <sighs> Truly a glorious and terrible burden <laughs> must become the man he hates. <laughs> it's like a unique form of torture. <laughs> oh. Now you're in the prison from Andor. Prison's one big magnetic field. The boots tell us where you are. How does any machine work in this prison? Hey, what's the matter, pal? Don't you remember the little people? Oh, is that Thomas Jane? Word was you got wasted. Oh, boy. You want to see what wasted looks like, little man? Pogs. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Just getting right down to business, jeez. I guess he must, I don't know, he must have as many enemies in here as he does <laughs> in law enforcement. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> God, the, the the face that launched a thousand memes. <laughs> like, how many more memes and and like gif loops is this movie gonna produce? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you gotta really want to kick a guy in the nuts to override like a magnet boot like that. <laughs> Lock him down. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> yes. This is going to be like Hollow Man interlude. <laughs> Great shot. <laughs> they took switch my for some f cop. It's cool. <laughs> We're gonna deal with it. <laughs> oh, great frame again. <laughs> Bra. Oh. oh, God, this is excellent. Bravo. Wow. What do you want? <laughs> oh. Take one god guess. <laughs> <You're>, uh, yup. <laughs> At the outset, it seemed like such a reasonable question, and then the truth is staring you in the face. <laughs> the answer, I should say. Aren't they giving you your medication in here? What was my medication? Oh. I was going to say, the one part of the montage we didn't see was, like, all the... Homework. Alex, I hand-fed you those pills for years. <laughs> Vivex. I haven't forgotten that. <laughs> Senses my 
reflexes, my memory of it. It's, a, it's like a tab of bad Quantrax. <laughs> I don't even know why that f***ing Yeti jumped me yesterday. You had a sandwich with his wife and his sister the night he was sent here. Oh. Uh. That bomb you built does deserve an audience. Belongs in the Louvre. The Louvre. I guess the LA Convention Center will have to do. Hey, okay, he's in. He did just the the right amount of homework. <laughs> it's very interesting, yeah, because it's like this guy's obsessed over this dude for years. He certainly knows like a ton about him, but I'm like, how many of the finer, yeah, like only a brother would know those details. <laughs> Does he have? You got a visitor. <laughs> <laughs> oh god Car? now that is between us <laughs> nothing like having your face cut off to disturb your sleep read the newspaper lately oh no oh tito tito wow I torched all the evidence that proves you're you. Okay, so wow, <laughs> looks like you're gonna be in here for the next hundred years. <laughs> Torch the evidence in half the force. Jeez, half the I've precinct. I've got a government job to abuse and a lonely wife. To <laughs> oh, oh, did I? Ooh. God, I missed that face. Ooh, wow. Ah! Yep. Wow. Oh, God. <laughs> what a predicament. <laughs> oh, wow. Quit teasing me. Stop it. I'm still really hurt, okay? There are leftovers in the fridge. No, no. I want to stay hungry for you. Whoa. My peach. My peach. Oh, Jesus. No. No. You're not respecting my boundaries. I'm coming in, Janie. Janie? You've got something that I crave. What? Ew. No! Ugh. When did you start smoking? You'll be seeing a lot of changes around here. <laughs> I just got a brand new bag. Ow! Ow! That's right. Be a friend rather than a parent. That's what you really want to do. I also wonder if they had to have somebody who actually knows how to blow smoke rings for that reverse shot. <laughs> the big shit cop, Archer, cut him a deal for turning state's evidence. Your brother's been released. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, no. There's a bomb at the LA Convention Center. I'm Sean Archer and now. Ow. Oh boy. What a nightmare. <laughs> He's gonna be trapped as this guy now. Seeing that face on you makes me afraid my tiramisu might come back up. This <laughs> nose, oh. this hair, this ridiculous chin. <laughs> Leave the chin. That, that is America's chin. First thing I need you to confess to is the location of the bomb. When I become an American hero for defusing the bomb, what's that worth? Next question. <laughs> oh, my. So he's just planning to live as Sean Archer for the rest of his <laughs> rest of his <laughs> living days. It's protected by a tamper switch, and it'll take us hours to bypass. Evacuate your team, Captain. No, but sir, we can't we can't disarm. Leave. Let me take care of this. Now where's Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan to break this up? Oh, baby. Oh. You'd <laughs> Uh, freaking <laughs> who designs their user interfaces? I get well, Pollux, I guess he he designs it from the ground up. <laughs> I wouldn't mind giving him a message. Interception. Now our side's got the ball. Sorry. Jeez. You gonna take that? It's time for a prison break. I wanna thank you for uh enduring all these years that I was an insufferable bore. Did you just have a surgical procedure? Oh, what, what? Well, was the stick successfully removed from your ass? 
Are you losing weight? Did you get a haircut? Nope. It's just Viagra. Also, shouts out to Margaret Cho, taking us back to the 90s. No. No. You know, I'm supposed to forget all the promises because you're going back into the fray. Oh. Then the hell with the country. Because the only place I'm going is upstairs with you. Whew. You know, <laughs> as incredibly messed up and creepy as this is, uh, I got no end to that thought. <laughs> It's just messed up and creepy. <laughs> How can I get these boots off? They only take them off in the clinic. Right before they fry your skull. Oh, yeah. He can withstand that. He's got the righteous indignation on his side. I'm out of cigarettes. Get back in line, Troy. <laughs> I said I'm out of cigarettes. Whoa, yeah. Gonna go out smoking. Anybody go away? Go away! See, now you're slipping into the role, my guy. Whoa! Oh, wow. Can I have a light? You know those things that kill you. <laughs> Get his boots, Walton. That is. <laughs> What's Joe Bob doing here? <laughs> Mr. Bob, I didn't touch your wife. Oh, good. But I know your wife loves you. So let's get out of here. You're more brain dead than Dubop. <laughs> oh! Oh, yeah! Not bad, okay. <laughs> Damn! We fire, we have men down in C4. Mama, it's a jailbreak. Oh, damn! <laughs> There's some really hardcore stunts in this movie. I mean, not not that I would expect anything less from a John Woo flick, but this is just, it's just like it's just like so many movies <laughs> crashed into each other. Yes, yes. Open the doors and reign anarchy. Oh, this poor guy. Give me your hand. Come on. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh. Climb. Climb. <laughs> it's Andor. <laughs> he is in the prison for Andor all this time. I can't swim. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Before they get that video game combo. Whoa. Ah. It burned my feet off. What an epic fall. <sighs> and then they just fly off. No, well, I guess he's dead. Oh, my. Oh, interesting. Did they make sure to give him the, the scar? I feel like she would know something like that. Happy birthday, Mikey. Oh. He took our baby, Sean. He took our little boy. <laughs> Oh, caught a bit of the conscience. Even if he is alive, Castor isn't stupid enough to come back to the city. You must. You must trust me. He's already here. <laughs> Everybody feels about the 500% uptick in face touching at the office this week. The man you think is your husband isn't. Take Jamie. Go to your mother's. Don't tell him where you're going. Just go. 
Uh, whoever you are, don't call again. Yeah. Yeah. Deep down, you know it's true. Sean Archer here. Who's calling? Well, if you're Sean Archer, I guess I'm Caster Troy. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Just hang up on him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Epic drum fills. This is like the perfect high concept. <laughs> it's like it's such a simple cat and mouse, but with like the perfect sci-fi twist. <laughs> it's like the stakes are just b baked right in. So you're still selling Hobson and drugs to Cheryl and Phil Roy. Cast her f***ing dry! Ah, oh, man, you scared me, man. <laughs> Caster Troy wearing Sean Archer's face probably doesn't care that much, but like they're good at giving Archer Troy these little ticks of yeah, just like ways in which he's not of this world. Little suspicions. I'm gonna get Sean Archer. He's vulnerable at home. His house is probably alarmed up the wazoo. Code is ten nineteen eighty six. That's his dead son's birthday. <laughs> Don't just break your heart. Whoa. Oh my god. How is it that you know so much about Sean Archer? <laughs> uh, I uh, <laughs> sleep with his wife. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this is this is fascinating. What <laughs> 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 is happening right now? <laughs> I'd like to take his. His face. Oh. How <laughs> cool. His face. Oh. Oh. Eyes. Nose. <laughs> skin. Coming off. <laughs> Coming off. This is like every actor's dream, this movie. Like, oh my God. Just the amount of things <laughs> that you get to do and play and. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, yeah, there you go. You're developing face swap dementia. Carl, uh. stop it! Calm down! Carl! Calm down! Jeez. Calm down! Catch you later. Yeah, like Mr. Fing Invisible gives a shit about you anyway, so I'll get old still. Calm down! Whoa! Yeah! Oh! Whoa. <laughs> yeah. oh. Well, that aged kind of weird, just given the, the casting. <laughs> Dress up like Halloween, and ghouls will try to get in your pants. <laughs> yeah, good point. Wear whatever you want. Not that even this is that, like revealing anyway it's like full jacket and pants do you have protection what do you mean like oh. <laughs> excellent transition next time let carl take his pants down slip this in his thigh twist it I guess it's nice to know Caster Troy draws the line somewhere. I am the king. <laughs> I am the king of domestic life. What do you what do you expect me after all this time just to just to jump on you? Is that what you expect? <laughs> Jesus No. No. Bro. I figured he might drop it on some of our old friends. Bro. And if my eyes don't deceive, I think this fellow's beginning to enjoy being you. Props to the guy who plays Pollux, too. I mean, Travolta and Nick Cage obviously get the limelight, but... Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Little boy. It's a nice-looking cat, too. Of course. He's yours, too. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, weird conflict. But of course. <laughs> oh boy. Oh no. Oh my. Michael. 
Uh, Michael. No. Michael. No, 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 no. What is the matter with you? <laughs> oh, the <laughs> oh, damn. Whoa. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's a good idea, baby. Listen to your music. Oh, we'll be over the rainbow in no time. <laughs> wow. God, all these casings flying. Come on, FBI, step it up. Or SWAT or whoever this is in conjunction with. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. Get place, get up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> pretty much <laughs> Swiss cheese the entire joint. <laughs> wow, nice. Ooh. Cab, give me the boy. It's funny that I keep calling him Kaz because we're at a point in Supernatural where Kaz. DL has body swapped somebody. <laughs> Not entirely dissimilar. <laughs> Why? Why? Wow! No! Buzz. Oh. Fog. Yeah, start knocking dudes out. Oh, nice. Golden eye POV shot. You know who it is. Oh! No. Take the boy and get out of here. Sure. Are you alright? Go! Oh. Oh. Wow. He's doing hey, man. <laughs> oh. We had some good times, didn't we? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, what's your arterial spray? <laughs> Let's go. Stand off. Let's do this. Stand off. You can't give back what you've taken from me. Let's just kill each other. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, perfect. <Dark. laughs> Yes. <laughs> can you? Oh, yes, you can. Remember who you're really shooting. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so silly, but so cinema. I love it. <laughs> That's my Venn diagram. <laughs> Where cine meets silly. Yes. God, charred his ass right there. Climb, boys. Yes! <laughs> Ooh. No! <laughs> oh. Brother. Brother. Sir, why are you so upset? <laughs> it's just Pollux Troy. <laughs> Wowie. No. <laughs> that guy. After last night's bloodbath, I'm terminating your war on Darius. Whoa. <laughs> what? I have something uh, I want to confess. Yeah, what do you do to him? I am Caster Troy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. It's weird. It's it's, it's badass, but it's not. But it is. But. <laughs> Last time I saw you was in this room. We had a fight. When I said I had to go away again. Oh no. Oh, this, this poor woman. <laughs> so bad for her. <laughs> oh, my God. 
a special op surgeon uh, gave me uh, Castor's face. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And then somehow Castor came out of his uh, his coma and killed everybody who knew about the mission. Sure. But not before transforming into me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, no amount of therapy will ever fix any of this. <laughs> oh, beautiful focus track. <laughs> oh, yes. I just love like the the hypersaturated emotionality. Your husband, me, my Sean's blood type is O negative. Caster's is AB. Oh. That's right. I also have more salt and pepper in my chest hair. Victor Lazaro died today. He had a heart seizure. Whoa. Come to me. I, I very much enjoy his his Nick Cage. His Caster Troy. Yes. Seek the research. Woof. Wowie. Oh, that must have been a very tiny little needle to... <laughs> Not, uh, you know, produce that big of a sensation. Oh. <laughs> Careful. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for trusting me. Maybe Sean's already dead, huh? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh. I once took a date out for surf and turf, not knowing she was a vegetarian. Oh. And uh, and broke her tooth on a rice seat. <laughs> oh. We drove around all night uh, looking for a for a, a all night dentist. He was so drunk, <laughs> he fixed the wrong tooth. What? <laughs> When I finally brought her home, even though it must have hurt like hell, you, you, you kissed me. Oh, aww. Go to him. I, I can never make it up to you. Well, you're damn well gonna try. Yes. Go find the bastard. Tomorrow he'll be at Victor's service. <laughs> Oh, where is he hiding? What does a guy to think when his uh, his wife runs off in the middle of the night? Then I'm a doctor that's on call, so please let me get back to work, okay? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Lies, distrust, mixed messages. This is turning into a real marriage. <laughs> 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 uh, I'll give it to you. Kind of a bar. <laughs> Sardonic bar. Where's Jamie? That's what I'd like to know. She stole fifty dollars from my purse and took off. Uh oh. He killed my brother. I'm not gonna let him take you too. I promise. Sean Archer is off your back for good. Interesting. Nice. We are here to celebrate the life of Victor Lazaro. Oh. Nominate Patrice. <laughs> the gulls. Release the gulls. There's got to be some white doves like just around the corner somewhere. <laughs> there they are. Yep. <laughs> we are officially at peak woo. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's a message. Think about what you did. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh no. Oh. <laughs> Oof. No chill. Honey. Honey. Aw. <laughs> of course. There's no way that wasn't going to happen. This is between us. Leave them out of it. Yeah. I'll do a repeat of that one guy. Your son was an accident. I wanted to kill you, but you took it so personally. <laughs> Why didn't you just yourself or let it go? <laughs> Your father could, 
No brother could either. Neither could his sister. Ooh. Sasha, what the f are you doing here? <laughs> Gee, Archer, I guess I'm crashing. I'm Caster. That's Archer. I'm bored. Oh, boy. Whee! <laughs> what a predicament! <laughs> like a f how many? <laughs> this is like a six way standoff right now. <gasps> yes. It's all in the eyes. Duck. Yep. Ooh, no. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Not in the Lord's house. Damn. This is a very compact shootout. <laughs> Take care of our boy. Don't let him grow up to be like us, promise. Aww. <laughs> Damn, that flip. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. God. Get to cover. Oh no. Wanda, this is Eve Archer. Ooh. Wowie. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hey, please, God, die. Hold it. The Dalton. Shut up. Honey, don't listen to him, honey. He's not your father. Hear my voice. I'm your father. Oh, broke the chip. Because shot your brother, Jamie. Kill him. Stop. Whoa. Now we're going to find out what's in Papa's bag. Peaches. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Say goodbye to Papa. Oh, yes. <laughs> I should have I should have thought that would come back. Don't what a mess. Me, <laughs> what the hell are planet I'm on? <laughs> Whoa! Oh, my dude. God. Sound effects, too. Ah! Cheapers. That is quite an explosion. We get every second of that. Whoa! Nice. Oh, it's been a while since I've seen some spirited boat stunts. Stop. Oh, no. Stop God, this is like that game of chicken at the beginning, except on the water now instead of on a tarmac. And with way more bloodshed. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Woo! Yep, yep. In all that coverage, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> but they sold a lot of those after this. <laughs> a lot of would-be caster Troys swooping those up. Jump! Whoa! Damn, dude. The amount of drag is impressive. Whoa! <laughs> Careful with that. Drop it. Whoa, you're gonna clothesline the both of you. Wow. Oh, Jesus. That looks so painful. Oh, this poor stunt guy. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, yep. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Silly, but awesome. <laughs> Woo! Wow! <laughs> 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 
to other stunt performers. <laughs> wow. Cheapers. I'm exhausted. Oh, jeez. Ow! Oh, yeah, that looks painful. Ooh! Oh! Get him! Oh! oh wow. Every time you look in the mirror, you'll see my face. Sure. No! Oh no! 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 Oh! Oh! Jeez! Oh! Jigsaw, why? Wow. End it with one more gift, boy. You okay, Archer? Whoa. What did you call me? He called you Archer, sir. Huh? They're bringing in their top surgical team from DC. You're gonna be okay. Oh boy. How much does the top surgical team from DC know about all this theoretical <laughs> sci-fi face swappery? Well, I guess not that theoretical, but yeah. What matters? My scar, this old bullet wound. I won't need it anymore. Oh, oh, good, because we we don't have that information anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Come through the door looking like Michael, <laughs> the angel from the movie Michael, not the dead child of theirs. Mean no disrespect. There's America's chin. Oh, you two. It's finally over. Oh. You just look like a regular girl again. Oh, come here. I'm sorry I shot you. I love that too. They got their little endearing face thing. I got something I have to ask both of you. Oh, damn. He needs a place to live. Hi. My name's Jamie. Oh. Come on. Okay. Oh, ha, 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 ha. these two. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, Joan Allen. That's her name. Okay. Nice, nicely done. Whew. Wow, that was quite. An experience. <laughs> oh my God! I am. I. 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 <laughs> I need to put my brain back together. <laughs> I need a moment to just center myself. <laughs> oh wow, that was truly a slice of slice of the '90s, man, of the highest order. Like, good God, what a wild experience. <laughs> I do not make them quite like that any longer, I, I must say. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, it was beautiful. Okay, <laughs> you have to get the, get the head, head twirl in there. God, that whole bit with him is the priest. <laughs> that was a Hans Zimmer score. Fun. <laughs> when it's not busy being like every, you know, piece of classical music you've ever heard. Or church music. <laughs> Inferno artist. There's a... There's a credit. There's a title for you. Hair technicians, certainly for this movie. <laughs> Printed on film. Back when most all films were. <laughs> Boy, howdy, people. We have quite a bit to talk about. Let's jump into this. Let's chat. <laughs> Whew. <laughs> I'm still, uh, forgive me, I'm still sort of reeling from everything we just witnessed um but that that was a blast you know it, this is a famously crazy movie and i feel like every time i come into one of these 
especially, you know, a movie like this, you know, with like a Disney movie or something like that, there's like a different sort of expectation and a different kind of pressure in terms of what kind of enjoyment you're going to get out of it, especially with any movie that has, you know, a particularly ingrained just fan base or, or reputation of any kind. Um, but this was, yeah, so much fun and and so wild. I mean, this is the the kind of movie I guess I I'm choosing to refer to now as as fever cheese because uh, it, it does have this sort of madcap quality. It does feel sort of feverish in its just hyper saturation of tone and emotion and just the way in which everything is cranked up to like fifteen. Like it's very operatic and certainly John Woo brings that sort of over cranked quality where. You yeah, everything is just as vivid as it could possibly be. And uh, and yeah, for the high concept at the core of it and the, the people, I mean, not only the two stars, like, of course, the two stars, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage uh, bouncing off each other, but just the array as well of notable that guys and character actors and just interesting people popping up. Like, this is a very colorful and and bombastic movie in a way that's like almost over it's quite overwhelming actually but in a way that that yeah has this sort of unbridled spirit that uh, it's a cliche now but like they they really don't seem to make them like this very often anymore because this is just so very much what it is it's like it's like an unfiltered id in a lot of ways it's just you've got this classic setup of you know this this murderous sociopath master criminal versus this you know fixated uh just overly dedicated and moralistic well not even moralistic i mean he's just so obsessed with catching this guy sean uh, archer that yeah he's willing to go to any lengths he's neglecting his family his life is sort of all revolving around this and it's just about these two sort of polar opposites you know cat and mousing with each other and uh, and yeah i mean so much of it is just the you know, unique choices that they pour into it. And yes, the high concept at the center of it, we're going to have these two guys switch faces. So you have a, you know, performance swap, essentially. You get to watch as both Nick Cage and John Travolta set up who uh, Caster Troy and Sean Archer are. And then, yeah, the fun, I would say begins, but the fun just begins immediately because uh, Nick Cage is <laughs> chewing all the scene chewing through the frame and like into the t tv or whatever kind of border is encapsulating the movie itself like he is on a, a wholly different plane and it's fascinating to me that this movie works in the way that it does as well as it does like i don't know this is again i'm fascinated to hear and discuss this with people to hear more opinions and to discuss this with people because it is certainly over the top and wild and cheesy and 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 sci-fi high concept in a way where sure you know if you start to poke too hard at any one piece of logic or way they explain away certain aspects of the general conceit i mean sure you're going to come up with holes and all sorts of other you know problems perhaps um but yeah th i don't know there's just something about this that is everything that it needs to be like it fully understands the assignment and yeah i think it's a really fun exercise to watch as these two actors trade because i mean they've got two very different acting styles and two different uh performances to emulate and i think it's interesting to watch i mean props to Dr to john travolta like nicholas cage and, and i think rightfully so is sort of in his own universe and orbit for this entire experience. Like he is, even as Sean Archer in a way, he is still kind of in his own pocket <laughs> within the rest of the, you know, uh, electron cloud of the movie, the rest of the, you know, sort of faculties that make this experience what it is. And if you remove any of the different pieces, I think a lot of it would fall apart. Like this is... I think one of those moments where the right combination of people collided to really sell this. And it's it's fun and interesting because, yeah, I mean, this harkens back to a time. I mean, it's certainly it's very much of the 90s, but it also reminds me some of the pulp of the 80s as well. It has almost like a there's like a Verhoeveniness about it. You know, there's some RoboCop in there. There's some of that sort of 
wacky sort of sly sardonic edge coming from behind the camera while you watch you know this high concept chaos play out in the you know beats of the story and all that but yeah just the way that they balance each other out and the way that you know earnestly uh john travolta sets up this sean archer guy i mean you're watching him in the beginning moments in the most intimate you know throes of joy just you know enjoying a day on the carousel at the park with his kid nick cage with his freaking mustache um and yeah you know like it's a classic setup you know this assassination attempt gone awry he loses his kid this starts a chain reaction of obsession that will swallow his life and strain his marriage and estrange him from his daughter and send her down you know a risky path and all that and the only way to stop it the only way to get any kind of peace is to put this guy away then to twist the knife to come up with this scenario in which yeah this bomb is planted and you know half the equation half the puzzle half the info we need is hidden and concealed because Castor Troy goes into a coma Pollux Troy has the rest of the information what do we do you gotta go undercover as the guy you hate the most in this world you have to wear his face like it's a fascinating again vehicle for fun and hijinks but it's also like intrinsically sort of odd and uncanny and and messed up and and psychologically harsh and i do appreciate the way that they played those aspects and those elements because yeah it's like at first you know john travolta is anchoring this with like the seriousness he's batman basically he's being bruce wayne he's dedicated to the mission and you know he's trying to maintain some kind of personal life or whatever but mostly he just wants to take this guy down once and for all he thinks he's maybe done it but oh turns out he's not dead and uh, and hey you, uh, you remember how i said you know things were going to be different now because uh you know the the chase is finally done well they they pulled me back in just when i thought i was out they pulled me back in and uh and yeah watching then as they trade characters is very gratifying because i don't know from there the game is set i mean they both translate the heart it's like while nicholas cage and john travolta each have very i would say different acting styles and that is certainly the case it's on display here um they do manage to like balance out the heart of this because i mean john travolta approaches sean archer when he's just sean archer you know with a certain level of just sincerity and then when he's at work you know when he's on the job you know he's very no nonsense he's very focused on the mission and then of course nick cage's caster troy is just like again the unbridled id he's just completely debauched and anarchic and gleeful and wild and he's just grabbing everyone's ass <laughs> and you know i mean yeah he's he's just hedonism incarnate he is very much the joker uh, to sean archer's batman essentially then to watch him as he sort of has to grapple with the psychological torment of the mission on archer as troy while i would say that John Travolta gives the more, like, ground... Not to call anything in this movie grounded, but he gives the more naturalistic performance, I guess. And I thought he did a really nice job embodying Caster Troy. It's funny, we're we're in a period in Supernatural uh, watch-alongs and and reaction highlights on Patreon where, not exactly, but there's a body swap-esque scenario happening with one of the characters, and they're not, you know, the, the stakes and the details aren't the same. But the effect of the one character inhabiting the other and then getting to watch that actor emulate the other actor is uh, is one that I very much I, I can feel them drawing inspiration from this because, yeah, you have this guy in Caster Troy who's just so mocking and jeering and, and such an imp. <laughs> and so to watch Travolta then do that, you know, 180 and to inhabit him is really fun and gratifying. And I think he does a terrific job like his is impressive for that. I could feel the amount of study and i think he's even said that like yeah i mean you know my job was a little easier in that i get to emulate nicholas cage who has already even just as himself without all the extra you know expressionist and kabuki inspired acting techniques he's already you know a pretty recognizable character um so yeah for nick cage emulating John Travolta. I thought it was interesting. It's it's a, it's a little bit more of an impressionistic or a, or an expressionistic approach in that it's not quite as naturalistic as Travolta's doing him, 
But I, I don't know. Like, there's something about Nick Cage where you're like, he does have to do this weirder job almost because Caster Troy doesn't care about coming across as John Archer. He, you know, holds it together just enough. He he pays enough attention to just enough of the facts and things to get by. Um, but, you know, I guess everybody's kind of noticing that he's behaving differently and he's embracing this sort of like, is a whole new me kind of thing, whereas Sean Archer as Caster Troy has a much more difficult time slipping into the character. And I like that while there were times where I was like, don't you know this guy like better than anyone though? And wouldn't before doing like it seems like he just he had that period of like I'm definitely not going to do this. He goes home, he thinks about it a little bit, and he's like, "Well, this is the chance to put the final nail in the coffin, so I, I guess I'll I'll do it." Uh, but you know, I feel like we missed a whole period of time where he would have done some a little bit more studying <laughs> just to be in character. Uh, but you know, I grant they also don't have time for that given the time bomb that is literally going to go off in several days. Um, so yeah, you know, watching him infiltrate the prison and be sort of reluctant to inhabit the role of Castor Troy, I think was a fun thing and something that Nicolas Cage did handle very strikingly. Like again, even if his acting style is more broad and is encompassing of less naturalistic approaches, I do think he did a really fun and interesting job of showing the anguish of Sean Archer, though a bit broadly, perhaps uh, still, you know, selling it earnestly and then, you know, <laughs> really kind of relishing in a different kind of wildness as he has to sort of play the the weird like mental dissonance and perhaps sort of breakdown that needs to happen as Sean Archer surrenders to this process to inhabit Castor Troy at least well enough to get some information from his brother and, you know, navigate through this prison, which again, I guess Andor must have taken some big inspiration from that with the whole uh, electromagnetic floors and it being out at sea and all that stuff. It's fun It's fun to see uh, even on this first watch just touchstones where I've seen this movie referenced in other places because certainly it has been quite influential over time. But yeah, even those little nuances like the way Pollux is clearly suspect of Castor when he first arrives at the prison, you know, he's very subdued, he's not behaving, you know, in the manner that <laughs> Castor Troy has behaved up until this point, and who better to pick up on something like that being off than his own brother, and a character who has been well established as being very close to him both intellectually, but also emotionally certainly, and and props to Alessandro Nivola just for keeping up with and playing off of, especially Nicolas Cage, because, you know, you have John Travolta and Nick Cage at the center there, the spotlight performances, but I think the supporting cast goes a long way to pinning down and grounding the rest of the movie around them, and yeah, I thought he really just naturally played as this guy's, you know, brilliant but more subdued younger brother, and I loved the way that his gaze on Archer Troy, uh, you know, creates this tension as he tries to infiltrate and get the information that he needs, because you never get the sense that he is entirely convinced of what he he is seeing, even though, you know, you don't think he's going to, you know, come to the conclusion that some kind of sci-fi procedure has taken place. Yeah, they just they just always kind of leave you uneasy that like his brother can tell. And uh, I really like the way that they then use the meme during that prison fight, you know, where Castor looks up at Pollux, which, by the way, uh, excellent choice of names, Castor and Pollux, the uh, the mythical twins, Gemini. I see you and I'm here for it. Justice for my Gemini is out there. I know you get a bad rap. Uh, but yeah, the way he's like looking up at him and it clearly dawns like, oh, I cannot be wearing the anguish and the weight of this ordeal in my face. I can't be looking like I'm on the verge of tears and like flinching every time I come across a guy who Sean Archer put in jail here who I'm about to be spending some very close quarters time with. I gotta give myself over to the assignment, to the character, to the ruse. And yeah, then watching as he sort of goes from this realization to then like, okay, I, I gotta get nuts, <laughs> you know? And, and watching as he then subsequently, you know, sort of forms Forms his own version of what being Caster Troy is. Like, I like that, yeah, they don't just become each other full on. And and you even get the sense of, like, did, did he do enough research to be able to sell this? It seems like, you know, once he recanted on his initial turning down of the assignment, 
uh, he kind of just launched right into it. And I know he knows a lot about this guy, but at the same time, it seems like there was some homework left on the table. But either way, they both kind of assume each other's lives. And then in ways, uh, you can't call it improving them, but they, you know, sort of fill in gaps where things were missing or at least sort of bring into heavy relief the things that were missing. And I mean, you know, in, in Sean Archer's life, a lot of that comes across in some very creepy, intimate moments with uh, Eve, especially Joan Allen's character, who I thought she, I felt so bad for her, but I thought she did a really nice job and she had a lot of poise and grace as this, you know, innocent caught up in this terrible, sordid, twisted web of circumstance. Um, and then Dominic Swain as well, uh, you know, very uncomfortable in a wholly different way uh, when Troy Archer is like, you know, getting uncomfortably close to her and stuff like that while he's pretending to be cool dad, I guess. Um, but yeah, having like the the sheer unsettling quality of that and then him going into the office and you know using his own crime to elevate his version of Sean Archer's profile to be like you know top FBI agent friggin time magazine person of the year and then meanwhile you have Archer Troy who, you know, is only doing, like, the things that he absolutely has to in order to embody this guy, and then also kind of, like, trying to be a better guy about it, like that whole thing with Gina Gershon, who I also really liked in this, where she's, like, coming on to him in the bedroom, and uh, he's, like, clearly very uncomfortable with that, and he basically rebukes her in that moment, and, you know, you get the sense that, yeah, like, regular Caster Troy, he would probably be all about this, uh, but, you know, he seems to actually kind of extend some kind of sympathy towards her that she does pick up on and that creates sort of an interesting turning point wherein she starts to look upon him in a different way and I mean it's not actually Castor Troy growing as a human being but for her it sort of is which is just again another interesting weird little nuance that then yeah it blossoms outward into uh, Archer as Troy looking out for her and then ultimately opening the door for him to adopt young Adam and bring everything full circle at the end when you know Hollywood morality dictates that uh that mom has to die and i mean you know she has a certain tragedy to her character as well just because yeah i mean she is clearly in too deep with caster troy and his whole organization and whatever her weird relationship is with her brother like yeah it, i think she has a really nice presence and is a very nice counterpoint to eve while also yeah opening the door up for a very sort of poetic and very kind of hollywood romantic uh wrap up for this core wound that exists within the character of sean archer to the point that he literally you know at the end decides to erase that core wound. he doesn't need the core wound anymore the wound is healed the wound he has been so particular about out throughout the whole film which did they bother to put that on sean archer caster troy when he got the face put on would he have known that like because i feel like eve would have definitely noticed something like that but anyway you know the the literal closing of the core wound nice <laughs> but yeah man just like so many great uh little guest stars and uh and and that guy actors and things like that i mean you got nick cassavetes you got colm fiore john carol lynch cch pounder robert wisdom matt ross friggin margaret cho uh <laughs> who is like again another one of those people who brings me right back to this moment in time this had such a fun and interesting array of just weird little human quirks and things like that on top of all just the opulent set design and costuming and music and the action, of course. I mean, this is a John Woo film. John Woo excels, certainly, is certainly renowned for his action. And I'm sitting here going, why <laughs> in God's green earth was Mission Impossible 2 so not this? I mean, not that it should be exactly this, but that movie is sort of famously and perhaps egregiously sort of dull for all of the you know, fun and interesting things it has going for it. And yeah, you look at something like this and you're like, this is like an anime come to life in a lot of ways. I mean, it has so many of those classic tropes as well, which those are also borrowing from various, you know, movie and, and Hollywood and other traditions 
too, but yeah, you just have this like extreme height of every tone, no matter what scene you're in. Like it certainly is most obvious during the action scenes where everyone's like dual wielding and there are doves flying by and seagulls <laughs> in certain cases. And yeah, you've got like a helicopter chasing a plane on the tarmac with a bunch of cars and then they're all crashing into a hangar and then, you know, at the end you've got speedboats chasing each other and you've got, you know, them fighting them as each other and then them fighting them as themselves and all sorts of different switcheroos and and I mean the action certainly is stylish and it's fun to see it all on film certainly more obvious I think when you have stunt doubles doing certain things but yeah there's so many interesting little set pieces that take place in all these different unique locations and whatnot uh, and then you know the LA Convention Center getting a lot of play for <laughs> crime movies in the mid 90s and going for that sort of sweeping epic classical music you know the sort of irony of Castor Troy as again this sort of unbroken idled monster but who has this sort of hoity-toity taste just the same um you know then the title it's just so well chosen you know obviously face off but they're facing off and then at the end you've got them facing off literally divided by a wall each looking into a mirror talking to each other so that they're looking upon the face they're truly talking to even though they're wearing it like it's such a you, you, like it's one of those movies where like to describe it makes you sound like you're on drugs and I think that's a really fun thing and yeah this is one of those movies that I think just gets by on the blunt force of its convictions and of its commitment, again, to every tone it attempts to inhabit. Like, when it's being an action movie, it's being 115% an action movie. When it's doing something intimate and perhaps romantic or at least, you know, sort of longing in a in a romantic kind of way, it is 115% that sort of romance novel level of pulp and commitment. Uh, when it's about, you know, crazy, globe-trotting, maniacal socio criminals it is 115 percent that weird kind of thing and and it commits you know with like the full range i think that's that's why the cheese works is because it is fully committed in such a hammy kind of way like everybody kind of seems no matter how subtle or not they're playing it to realize that's the movie they're in and the more I sit here and the more I think about it, the more this does really feel like some kind of anime where, you know, you have these two archetypical characters, these two paragons of two different philosophies aimed at one another who are just not going to stop until one or both of them is dead and gone for good. And yeah, just like the way the, again, emotionality is infused into everything and the way everything is just as vivid and saturated and heightened as it could possibly be like yeah this is like I, I would posit this as like one of the best live action animes that isn't an anime just because the more I sit here and the more I take it all in I'm like yeah that's exactly what we just saw like like you throw a rotoscope over this and these are like the character types the weird you know situations that unfold the weird violations of you know people's personal space and just social contracts in general and the you know just chaotic array of details that comprise each one of these characters in the world that they live in and the slight sci-fi flourishes that the movie has beyond all that because it's not even that sci-fi but it is but it's not you know like the central conceit is but it's not really taking place in a world that feels very far beyond our own so yeah man like this is just such a fascinating moment in time a time capsule most certainly and one of those I think special movies where just the right people coalesced at the right time and all got on the same page together and committed to I mean something that with a with a concept where if you do half a good job something entertaining should come of this but yeah then you get all of these talents and all these people who are clearly inclined to embrace the opportunity and the challenge of just going completely all in and over the top i mean yeah <laughs> i can see why this has the meme and cult and classic status that it does and uh, i had an absolute blast so guys leave me your thoughts anything you want to point out anything i might have missed and uh yeah let me know what other movies you might want to see reactions to uh i haven't seen con air that's another nick cage joint i could check out there are probably a few nick cage joints out there that i still need to catch up with but uh but yeah i'm so glad to have finally seen this and to have been able to share this first watch with you uh just <laughs>
I could go on forever with the craziness of this movie, but I think that's that's all the main stuff that ought to be said. So uh, yeah, thank you for joining me. If you've joined me, leave a like on the video, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And last but not least, let's do a patron of the day shout out. <laughs> Andrew Hayes, listen, Andrew, if there's anybody at the Patreon whose face I'd like to take off and swap out for my own, it's you, Andrew. You have been one of our most loyal. You know us better than most people out there do or could possibly hope to imagine, and that's why I want to assume your life. I feel like you know enough about me that you could slip in undetected. All we would need is to change faces. We're pretty close and similar in body type. And that way, I could l walk a mile in your shoes, maybe improve your living a little bit, you know, f try my hand at your life as a, as, a, as a creative person and a locksmith. And you can come here and make big reactions, you know what I mean? So, uh, Andrew... <laughs> <laughs> the further I go, this this Nick Cage is kind of f falling apart. Um, but hey, buddy, thank you for being here and for all the love that you've shown us over so much time. You know, we don't get to catch up often, but it's always great when we do. And uh, I hope you're doing well out there. And uh, yeah, whose face do you want to take off, man? <laughs> Let me know. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Much love. Cheers. Oh.